Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with a new podcast. I know it's been a while and this is the first podcast for the year 2020 or 2020. I just been sick as of late. Recently I got sick and it's not fun. I still have a, a, a little bit of leftover sickness. It's the cough. I still have the cough. It's not something I am going through i don't like it but in any case uh, my body's feeling a little bit better and so this is the mr informal uh, podcast number 90 the first podcast for the year 2020 here are the four topics number one opening ceremony has been acquired number two china is reducing the amount of plastic for one-time use plastic number three google shopping it is unifying its shopping algorithms number four cashierless walmart i'm not really into that so those are the four topics for today don't forget to add me on instagram that's m-i-s-t-e-r-i-n-f-o-r-m-a-l and then check out my website m-r-i-n-f O-R-M-A-L dot com. Don't forget to check that out. And so let's get on with the Mr. Informal podcast. So for the first topic for the Mr. Informal edition number 90 comes from the article from Hype Beast. Opening ceremony has officially been acquired by Op White's parent company. If you don't know Op White is a uh, a designer is Virgil Blah. So basically, uh, New Guards Group is the company who acquired opening ceremony. So basically, the terms of agreement have not yet been disclosed. However, founders Humberto Leon and Carol Lim will still be involved with their new co-creative director roles. Opening ceremony in-house label currently accounts for 25% of the company's total revenue with its acquisition. NGG aims to raise the current statistic moving forward and bring the brand's in-house line production to Milan. Leon and Lim said in a statement, Our curiosity and entrepreneurial spirit have been at the center of opening ceremony since we founded the company and our continued search for innovation led us to partnership with uh, David De uh, uh, Giglio and Andrea Grilli who have created one of the best global brand platforms in existence today. The next step for opening ceremony means we get to connect our desire to invent the future of design for our community to a dynamic infrastructure. Okay. I don't really know what those means, but those are just marketing teams. Look. So what do I think of opening ceremony being acquired by the same company who also acquired Off-White? Same with Ambush. I mean, look, all that statement from the founders are just BS to me. I think that the sales wasn't going, wasn't going good. They probably did not have enough cash flow. And so they decided to be acquired. I mean, to me, that's all it seems to. And not only that, you don't get to hear much of cer- opening ceremony. I do agree that opening ceremony has a cult following. I, there are m- many items that I like from opening ceremony, but they've never been in the stop uh, spotlight. They've always seemed to be underground. You know, it's almost as zip that you hear Rick Owens. Rick Owens always on the spotlight. It's on mainstream. But opening ceremony is like Rick Owens, but just not including the spotlight. And I don't think opening ceremony should have let this through. They should have never been acquired. They should have kept going, maybe hire better designers or actually create better designs. Because they keep they, they, they keep making the same old stuff every year. And if you look at their uh, fashion show their designs I mean what has changed I mean I don't hear much from opening ceremony in terms of design I don't 
see much innovation. Don't get me wrong, I think they're street extravagant. That's how I see them as. But they're, they always seem to not cross that line in terms of actually finding their niche. You get what I mean? And again, they do have a cow following. Maybe they do have a niche. Maybe I'm wrong, but based on my observation, it's all it's almost as if they don't know what they are. Rick Owens know what they are. You get what I mean? I mean even certain brands such as Off White know what they are. Heck even street brands such as Supreme know what they are. Yes, they are overpriced, but that's different. But with opening ceremony should should they even keep saying in, innovation? Should they even use that word? Should they even use dynamic infrastructure? I, I mean, unless I miss something here, I don't see anything dynamic about their designs. I mean, to me, think about this. Nego's human made may is probably much more dynamic than opening ceremony. And I actually think opening ceremony is much more trendier. It's much more stylish than human made. And yet, for some reason, I feel as though human made is much more dynamic. And hey, if they want to be acquired by this company, that's their decision. So this article is coming from Bloomberg. Climate change, China unveils plan to reduce single-use plastic by 2025. I wonder why that takes that long so China tops economic planner said it would cut production and use of plastic over the next five years helping reduce one of the world's biggest sources of plastic pollution by the end of this year non-degradable plastic bags will be banned in places such as supermarkets and shopping mall in major city as well as in the country's ubiquitous food delivery services according to a plan released by National Development and Reform Commission on Sunday also, the use of plastic in the world's most populous nation has risen as online shopping and food delivery apps have become part of everyday life, even in rural areas. Alibaba Group Holding, which organizes 24-hour shopping marathon every year, has been criticized for shipping 1 billion packages in a single day. Wow. So, that... Um, what do I think of this? Why 2025? Why not 2022? Why in five years? That's the only problem I have about this is why five years? Are you telling me that all of these companies, all these brands can't adapt in two years? It takes five years to adapt? That's quite slow. But in the essence of the goal I think this is great uh, reducing single use of plastic is great uh, hopefully a lot of nations will also do this will follow and we'll use more biodegradable plastic also we need to do more research on how to degrade plastic doesn't matter if it's single use plastic multiple use plastic biodegradable pla plastic we need to find a way to re, uh, degrade plastic much faster than what we have now. We all know plastic products takes a thousand years to degrade by nature. But now we need to find much, much faster. And think about this. Alibaba ships 1 billion packages in a single day. That's absolutely insane. But then again, you have billions of people in China. Um, another paragraph in the um, in the article says the Asian nation will ban non-degradable single-use plastic straws nationwide by 2020. Hey, okay, that's good. It said with the global reducing the intensity of consumption of such plastic utensils by takeout services in urban areas by 30% by 2025. I think again, we shouldn't have to go. Uh, we shouldn't have. It doesn't have to. It should not take till 2025 to make this effective we should just do it in two years but then again it's China as you know 
they do their own thing over there and that's basically what i think of that on to the third topic from retaildive.com google unifies apparel shopping on mobile search so Google is letting smartphone users see clothing and accessories from multiple online stores in a new section of mobile search according to a blog post by Dennis Ho, group, uh, group product manager of Google Shopping. When a mobile user enters a search term running shoe, a search term like running shoes, Google will identify product from internet retailers and bring them together with enhanced functionality. Shoppers can filter the search uh, result by style, department, and size or see several uh, images of a product search results point to online stores letting shoppers visit these uh, sites to order products Google indexes and organizes product information for more than 1 million stores worldwide for this section the company said it won't charge retails to be included Google provided an online guy with more information about which products are eligible to appear in the section so another article says while Google isn't collecting commissions from stores whose product that appear in appear uh, in search results the company doesn't want to see Amazon encroach further on product research some marketers are reportedly shifting as much as 50% to 60% of their search budgets from Google to Amazon which become the most popular starting point from product search per researcher jump shot so what do i think of this well it looks like google is getting hammered by amazon search results not only that they're changing the way their google shopping is because well amazon is taking their profits away as you can tell uh, some marketers are reportedly shifting as much as 50 to 60 percent of their search budget from google to amazon well then Google is losing money. What happens? Google is trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. They're trying to reduce that. And so they're basically letting all uh, brands know that, hey, um, we're not going to uh, charge you for anything to appear in our search result. And so please uh, follow our submissions and put your products in Google search. Not only uh, so, if they're not charging, what are they trying to get out of it well i think uh data they're trying to collect users data and co uh, users behavior when it comes to shopping what kind of products and so they could probably sell that to certain marketers and so in other companies i mean other marketing companies so i mean i i use google shopping sometimes but it doesn't it's not it's a hit or miss for me sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but is this really going to take away from Amazon's search results I don't think so because when it comes to Google and shopping they, they're never good at it I mean why Google always seem to rely on algorithm and their electronics or their uh, AI to always steam to get it right when it goes to search just normal search like what is the weather for today that's accurate but, it, but when it comes to finding specific items in the shopping area it's never that good it's never that good sometimes Amazon is just better at it and the e-commerce is getting heated I mean everybody wants to find I, I mean everybody wants to be part of the shopping e-commerce profits for Google it helps run out commerce uh, play that's becoming increasingly central to search giant strategy as it run, ramps up competition with Amazon well there you go as you can tell Amazon is a problem for Google I'm glad it is a problem maybe it will lit a fire in Google's behind so the last topic for today in from retail.com Walmart opens cashierless store in Florida Walmart opens a cashier this neighborhood market store last week in Coral Way Florida featuring online grocery pickup same-day delivery and checkout with me program according to a company's blog post itself checkout will offer expanded lanes for, for larger basket 
and an amount employee will be ahead uh, on hand or to assist needed the company's noted in its blog post that it tested prototype stores in Arkansas with success the checkout with me option lets staffers check out shoppers anywhere in stores using handheld device I'm not a fan of this I'm really not so moving on this isn't the first time Walmart has experimented with its smart checkout offerings in October 2018 checkout with me designed to handle smaller transaction debuted to soften holiday shopping congestions at the checkout counters according to business insider Walmart is one of the retailers trying to balance consumer demand for faster checkout with shopping with shopper reluctant around different uh, tech options aimed to boost experience see I'm not a fan of cashierless uh, stores because first of all a lot of people in the self checkout don't even know what they're doing the second thing is that many people go to the checkout because you only have three people who's doing the checkout who's doing the cashier three cashiers so of course you're gonna have a long line if you have a long line people go to the self checkout and if the self checkout are are basically slow then it's gonna have a long line so it's fail it's a failure from consumers this is why I hate cashierless stores can't stand it if you're gonna have a cashier list stores why don't you reduce your pricing then why is the prices of items still going up even though you don't have people I mean you're not paying people to do cashier you're basically paying the machines which is actually cheaper we all know so I mean look I really hope this doesn't be it doesn't get adopted by other stores because I find cashier list stores just a waste of time, really slow. I'd rather have five cashiers or six cashiers open and have two people or three people waiting. That's fine with me. But when you have a self checkout that you have five or six people waiting, that's a waste of time. I mean, it's almost like we didn't we didn't change anything. We didn't make we didn't. I mean. The, the goals and the, the plans and the goals that we were thinking just did not is not being fulfilled so I mean here's another thing from the paragraph Harris Teeter also started testing cashierless concept in Charlotte last year the store typically priced smaller transactions than traditional store location with foot traffic Primarily coming from urban residents and professionals, according to Retail Wire. Um, in lieu of committing to a self checkout only store, other retailers are working out technology backed solution to facility smoother checkout transaction. Recently unveiled its frictionless smart checkout service that lets shoppers scan items with store apps. Look, if I'm gonna do that, how come I'm not getting any savings? I'm basically doing the work that the store should be doing and, and this is what Walmart says about this Walmart's decision to have no cashiers could free up employees to address issues with processing transaction as they arise that, that's BS to me all it means is that Walmart's decision to have no cash could free up cash flow that's all it is Anyways, look, if you're a fan of cashierless stores, that's you, but me, I'm not a fan of it. And I think it's a waste of time. It's going to be much longer lines. And so that concludes this uh, podcast number 90, Mr. Informal podcast number 90. I am Mr. Informal. Hopefully you learned something today and I hope you um, listen to me all the way through. Uh, like I said, I've been sick for the year 2020. And so this is the... Uh, first podcast of the 2020 Mr. Informal and so I will see you in the next podcast bye bye